9th of December 2018. The news headline. 2019 general elections in jeopardy as card reader loses out to presidency. The general elections of February, March, 2019, may have been insinuated into the sphere of jeopardy, if President Muhammad Buhari's refusal to grant assent to the amended Electoral Act stands. This is not because President Buhari is set to directly cripple the electioneering process. However, it is because the amended Act, which packs within it some provisions which are expected to detoxify the old version, may not see the light of day. Jaga, Buhari and Yakubu The vacillation of Mr. President over the amended Electoral Act, which climaxed on Friday, December 6, 2018 some 72 days to the general elections which will commence with the presidential and federal legislative elections on February 16, 2019, with the president returning the amended version to the National Assembly, unsigned, raises concerns of possible disruptions to the elections, if legal changes are introduced so close to the election. But very mean political observers view this rejection as a corruption of the process. According to this school of thought, if you examine the definitions of corruption as described by the World Bank, WB, and Transparency International, T, the vacillations and rejection of the amended Electoral Act, under shallow pretenses, is a form of corruption. To explicate the latter position, the WB defines corruption as a situation where public office is abused for private gain, while T describes corruption as the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. Some believe that the rejection is only a ploy to avoid the use of the card reader and thereby instigate electoral fraud and chaos in the coming general elections. They, therefore, probably, rightly so, see the rejection as a major setback for the card reader and the gains made by Professor Atahiru Jagas Inek and the electoral system for ensuring election integrity. Beyond the card reader, is the very significant issue of the transmission of results. The amended act provides penalties for a refusal to transmit, just as the direct transmission of results to the central point immediately after counting at every polling unit knocks off the possibility of collusion or conspiracy to collude. While those who support the president aver that rather than corruption for personal gain, the president was only being careful to avoid legal and political tardiness, a counterintuitive position insists that it was a tragedy that the demand by Nigerians for presidential assent to the amendment has been jettisoned and in its place the president has voted for the type of chaos and governance uncertainty that befell the APC primaries where everyone was allowed to choose their own laws for conducting primaries while the party determined arbitrarily which of the outcomes it chose to abide with, to a ridiculous game that will more rather than improve the integrity of elections. Anyone following the president's preferences since coming to power may easily predict the current outcome. From the president's suspected initial preference to appoint his sister's stepdaughter, Mrs. Amina Zikari, as the chairperson of INEC, only to perish the thought when public pressure became too much to bear, to the type of outcomes elections conducted under this regime has produced, there are those who, rightly or wrongly, express anxiety at the type of electoral configuration that is in the offing. From what has happened so far, it may not be too difficult to come to the disturbing conclusion that the president may either be blatantly unconcerned with integrity or ethics when the matter of election is at issue, or some individuals within the presidency are the ones pulling the strings in the name of President Muhammadu Buhari. This conjures a very strange, nostalgic feeling when interfaced with the fact that the present administration is a beneficiary of the electoral reforms, albeit imperfect, engendered by Jaga. However, when pitched against the recent statement of the very progressive-minded First Lady, Aisha Buhari, that two or three individuals are the ones drawing back the progress of this administration, it would, therefore, be safe to conclude that the individuals are now set to draw back the progress of the generality of Nigerians for their own selfish ends, using the instrumentality of the legally defective old Electoral Act for the 2019 general elections despite the excuses given for returning the bill to the National Assembly, the actions of the presidency, prior to the Sandy climax, appeared to have betrayed its reluctance to face a general elections under an improved Electoral Act. Describing the early signs of the reluctance that the president raised concerns of spelling errors, 
as reasons for earlier refusal to sign the last two versions sent to him, even though the perceived fear was the card reader which makes rigging on a large scale problematic, it still beguiles the mind. For instance, the joint collegiate approach to accommodate the concerns of all was adopted and everybody came on board to develop a widely accepted document as the draft electoral legislative framework. Furthermore, it was the Senate Committee, representatives of the executive, led by the presidential liaison officer, Senator Tenag, along with other aides, as well as members of civil society, that all jointly worked together to review the expressed concerns of everyone which were addressed in the improved document that was again returned by the President.